Hello and welcome to Finance Walk. Uh, today we are going to see industry analysis, how industry analysis is done. Uh, and uh, as an equity research analyst, it's uh, important to uh, study industries. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see uh, uh, what we are going to cover in this chapter. We are going to uh, cover industry life cycle analysis and Porter's five forces model, which is uh, very important for industry analysis. Okay. Industry life cycle analysis. Now, if you uh, see this figure, in this you will see uh, there are four uh, stages. Uh, first is introduction, second is growth, third is maturity and fourth is decline. If you uh, check uh, left hand side is sales revenue or profit, uh, this will uh, the uh, pink line uh, is of uh, total industry sales revenue and uh, uh, blue line is of total industry profit. Uh, on these two variables, sales revenue and profit, we are going to uh, check uh, different stages of uh, uh, industry life cycle. And apart from uh, these two variables, that is sales and profit, we are also going to check other variables uh, from which we can understand the uh, stage uh, the particular industry uh, is in. So we'll start. Uh, we'll start with uh, first stage, that is startup or introduction stage. Uh, in this uh, figure, you can see this particular area is uh, uh, highlighted by green uh, square. Okay, so uh, this uh, stage is uh, called startup or introduction stage. Uh, how we'll check how the particular variables. Uh, 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 play uh, in this particular stage sales are uh, low you can see from uh, uh, pink line in this uh, uh, green uh, box the sales are very low product product uh, one or a few number of people selling the particular product cost high cost per customer profit profit would be negative customers customers are essentially innovators and uh, competitors would be uh, very few monopoly or monopolistic competition you can see uh, so your company has no competition because uh, you originated the product first and are the first to get customers. So if you can see some uh, startup firms or uh, online ventures in that you can see uh, there is uh, no competition and you started the uh, product first and there is uh, there are very few competitors uh, who are following you uh, right now. Uh, examples would be uh, electric car or a digital camera or mini disc. So these are some of the innovations where uh, you can see at early stage there is no competitor and these are the features. Next is growth stage. So uh, from a green, bro green box in a, a right hand side figure you can check uh, the sales are uh, rapidly uh, growing. Then product, uh, there are several companies selling, uh, so there is competition to make the best product. Uh, many companies at this stage will add variations, color changes and the new values to the product to make it more competitive. Companies in the lead will also work to develop uh, brand familiarity. Cost, uh, average cost per customer. Profits are is uh, basically rising. Profits are rising. Customers. Customers are essentially early adopters. Competitors. 
growing number monopolistic competition or oligopoly once the market grows uh, other vendors will uh, want to get involved so uh, the particular company will lose uh, its monopoly position examples would be a cd player or personal computer so this is about uh, growth stage third is maturity and stabilization stage where uh, sales are at its peak uh, from uh, uh, this figure green box it is pointing that uh, sales are definitely high peak sales and uh, uh, cost low cost per customer profits are high customers large number of customers in this stage competitors stable number beginning to decline monopolistic competition or oligopoly or pure competition uh, because more and more vendors get involved as more companies uh, learn to make the product and people try to cash in on the original idea so there is a lot of competition at this stage examples would be refrigerator and uh, pocket calculator so with this let's move to uh, last stage that is decline stage so uh, check uh, in the figure uh, green box it's showing decline stage uh, obviously from the figure you can uh, make out but uh, uh, let's see uh, how these different variables uh, play a important part in, in this stage sales are uh, declining product becomes obsolete okay cost low cost per customer uh declining profits customers are especially laggard so uh you know uh, customers they uh, follow your product or company after majority of uh, the uh, clients then competitors declining number uh, because there are so many vendors the supply demand situation will cause the price to drop and eventually the price will be slow sorry price will be low nobody will want to make the product anymore because it will be unpro unprofitable so these are the four stages okay and in this uh, stage the ex uh, let's see the examples uh, that are in the industries which are uh, at this particular stage uh, there is the uh, you know black and white television and pager pager is almost defunct now <clears throat> so uh, with this uh, let's move to uh, next uh, uh, model or framework for analyzing industries uh, it's called porter's five forces model so from this uh, uh, figure you can check uh, there are uh, especially five uh, variables according to michael porter the profit potential of an industry depends on the combined strength of the following five basic uh, competitive factors which are those factors first is threat of new entrants second is rivalry among the existing firms third is pressure from substitute products fourth is uh, bargaining power of buyers and uh, fifth is bargaining power of sellers so you can see from this figure uh, threat of new entrants uh, then uh, rivalry among the existing firms pressure from substitute products bargaining power of buyers and bargaining power of sellers so let's see each of uh, uh, this point in detail okay industry analysis using porter's five forces model as i mentioned uh, these are five pointers threat of new entrants rivalry among the existing firms pressure from substitute products bargaining power of buyers and uh, bargaining power of sellers michael porter says if you want to analyze any particular industry scan that industry from these uh, points or uh, forces and you will be Uh, able to analyze that particular industry well okay now let's see uh, these pointers one by one okay so we'll start with first threat of new entrants new entrants add capacity 
inflate cost, push prices down and uh, reduce profitability. So if an industry faces the threat of new entrants, its profit potential would be limited, right? The threat from new entrants is low if the entry barriers confer an advantage on existing firms and deter new entrants. So uh, when entry barriers are high, especially when first, the new entrants have to invest substan substantial resources to enter the industry. That is, economies of scale are enjoyed by the industry. Second, existing firms control the distribution channels, benefit from product differentiation in the form of brand image and the customer loyalty, and enjoy some kind of pro proprietary experience curve. Switching cost. Uh, these are essentially one-time cost of switching from the products of one supplier to another are high. So entry barriers are high when switching costs are high. Uh, the government policy limits or even prevents new entrants. Okay, so threat of new entrants. So if you uh, look at any particular uh, industry, if you see threat of new entrants, uh, check whether threat of new entrants uh, 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 is there. Or uh, uh, I would say uh, whether entry barriers high are high. Entry barriers are high can be in uh, you know many things. Uh, maybe uh, in case of uh, uh, airline industry where uh, huge investments prohibit or uh, let's say discourage uh, new players in this particular industry. Okay, so in this case, entry barriers are high. Second rivalry among the existing firms or uh, say competition okay firms in an industry compete on the basis of price quality promotion service warranties and so on generally a firm attempt firms attempt to improve its competitive position uh, provoke retaliatory actions from others if the rivalry between the firms of an industry is strong competitive moves and counter moves dampen the average profitability of the industry. So if there is high competition, there is less profitability. So the intensity of rivalry in an industry tends to be uh, strong when, the num when first the number of competition or competitors in the industry is high and second at least a few firms are relatively balanced and capable of engaging in a sustained competitive battle. The industry growth is sluggish, prodding firms to strive for a higher market share. The level of fixed cost is high, generating strong pressure for all firms to achieve a higher capacity utilization level. There is chronic overcapacity in the industry. The industry's product is regarded as a commodity or near commodity, stimulating strong price and service competition the industry confronts high exit barriers. So in this case, uh, rivalry uh, in, in an industry uh, is strong. Okay, so third force of uh, a portal model is pressure from substitute products. So uh, what do you think of any substitute products? Okay, so uh, tea, coffee would be substitutes. So uh, this way, uh, let's see how, what, uh, the this particular point says in a way all firms in an industry face competition from industries producing substitute products performing the same function as the product of industry substitute products may limit the profit potential of the industry by imposing a ceiling on the prices that can be charged by the firms in the industry the threat from substitute products is high when when the price performance a trade-off offered by the substitute products is attractive. Second, the switching cost for the prospective buyers are minimal. Third, the substitute products are being produced by industries earning superior profits. So, these are especially uh, the uh, uh, points you need to look at 
in uh, this particular point that is pressure from substitute products. Okay, now with this let's move to fourth point that is bargaining power of buyers. What is uh, What are buyers? Buyers are a competitive force. They can bargain for price cut, ask for superior quality and better service and induce rivalry among competitors. If they are powerful, they can depress the profitability of the supply industry. The bargaining power of a buyer group is high when its purchases are large relative to the sales of the seller. It's second, its switching costs are low and third is it poses a strong threat of backward integration. So uh, look at particular uh, industry where buyers power is high and buyers they buy in bulk. In that, in that case one seller is not uh, you know uh, sufficient to control the market. Uh, in this case uh, especially buyers control the market and uh, this, this point is really important from industry's point of view. With this let's move to next point that is bargaining power of sellers. Suppliers uh, like buyers can use a competitive force in an industry as they can raise prices. As they can raise prices, lower quality and curtail the range of free services they provide. Uh, powerful suppliers can hurt the profitability of the buyer industry. Suppliers have strong bargaining power when, now this is opposite, listen carefully, uh, this is exactly opposite of uh, bargaining power of buyers. Now here we are discussing bargaining power of suppliers. So sup these suppliers uh, uh, have strong bargaining power when uh, one few suppliers dominate and the supplier group is more concentrated than the buyer group. I repeat few suppliers dominate and the supplier group is more concentrated than the buyer group. Second there are hardly any viable substitutes for the product supplied. Third, the switching cost for the buyers are high. Fourth, suppliers do present a real threat of forward integration. So these are five forces, uh, Porter's five forces model. If you are doing any industry analysis, in this case, uh, check any industry from this point of these pointers. For example, if you are studying uh, uh, IT industry, in that case, look at threat of new entrants. The companies which are uh, which can be threat, uh, you know, to the established players. Second, rivalry among the existing firms. If uh, uh, there are companies like uh, TCS, Cognizant. Uh, Infosys, so Wipro, what is the rivalry uh, amongst these uh, existing firms? Third pressure from substitute products, is if is there any substitute uh, product available? Uh, uh, how these uh, uh, substitute products are doing? Fourth is bargaining power of buyers, uh, that is bargaining power of clients abroad or uh, overseas clients and uh, bargaining power of sellers. So sellers especially these uh, sellers how, how they are doing uh, you know uh, whether they have high bargaining power so look at uh, any industry uh, from this uh, pointers uh, keep in mind that this model or framework is really important uh, in industry analysis Thank you.